Hello students and welcome to the e-learning program initiated by Shri Gyan Manji Vidyapeet for the students of standard 9 in which we are learning the subject of English. Students from the previous three lectures we had started with chapter number 9 of Beehive. Let us take a quick recap of what we have learned so far in uh, Beehive's chapter number 9. The name of the chapter is the bond of love in which we learn that the chapter is written by Kenneth Anderson. This is a uh, incidents taken from the personal life of the author Kenneth Anderson, in which, uh, when while uh, in India during the British rule, when the Britishers were there in India, uh, at the time. Kenneth Anderson was employed somewhere in the south of India and then at that time uh, they happened to catch a slot bear uh, while it tried to come out of the sugar cane field where the farmers were uh, firing at the wild pigs which had gotten into that sugar cane field, ripe sugar cane field and uh, to drive the pigs away they were firing shots at them from the rifles etc and Kenneth Anderson plus a uh, few of his colleagues were also there hunting the um, wild pigs and uh, by the sound of the uh, firing of the guns etc the wild pigs ran away to the forest back leaving and there was quite a lot of silence in the sugar cane field which suggested that perhaps the p wild pigs have gone away but all of a sudden a black thing comes running out of the sugar cane field out in the open towards them. Uh, Kenneth Anderson, the author, realizes instantly that this is not a wild pig, this is quite, uh, this is a sloth bear and it's quite harmful, uh, hum harmless. So he doesn't uh, shoot the uh, sloth bear uh, but one of the companion cannot, uh, is not able to control over the gun he has and he shoots the wild uh, the uh, wild sloth bear and kills him instantly, kills that uh, wild thing instantly over there. Uh, when the sloth bear is dead and lying on the ground, a small black thing separates itself from the bear and then they realize that it was a uh, baby bear cub, sloth bear cub, which uh, was now going round and round around its dead mother and very, very much crying and trying to uh, make different sounds to wake up the mother and so uh, the author and uh, the companions run towards it to catch it and uh, the baby bear uh, cub uh, it runs away into the uh, sugarcane field where with lots of difficulty they are able to catch it and they put it in a gunny bag and uh, go home where the author presents that cub to the wife. The wife is very much uh, excited and surprised and very much likes that uh, small baby bear cub and instantly puts a ribbon and declares the and after a few days gives the name uh, to the cub as Bruno and then uh, the Bruno uh, the baby bear cub is quite small and cute and so uh, instantly it becomes quite famous in the neighborhood especially the bungalow where lots of tenants were living and uh, it's a cute little cub having a little bit of difficulty in the uh, starting uh, for uh, because it just got separated from mother and it survived on the mother mi mother's milk. So uh, to feed it with a bottle became a little bit troublesome for a few days. But then um, a bear cub adjusted itself and uh, very soon took to drinking milk from the bottle and after a few days literally it can eat anything whatever you so we have a very long long list of what are the different things that were fed to the baby bear cub and uh, the baby bear cub was quite playful etc and they loved that very much but after uh, there was after a few months the size of the bear grew quite up and we have one or two incidents where it got into some small uh, accidents at home where once he drank up the used oil that was uh, used engine oil that was uh, kept by the author to uh, drive away the termites and he drank up that whole one gallon of used oil but nothing happened to him but earlier uh, he had swallowed uh, poison which was kept for the rats and uh, he paralyzed himself 
temporarily uh, because the poison started working. But immediately the uh, family, actually the author, he took uh, the animal to the uh, veterinary doctor and very soon he was given the antidote and uh, oh, one 10 cc antidote was given and then waited for 10 minutes nothing happened they again gave another 10 cc and then uh, the bear started showing recovery and uh, in very short time yes it was fully recovered that means the uh, poison did have a permanent effect on him and he was proudly showing to uh, the author and the family that uh, I am a big bear and nothing can happen to me with a little bit of poison. So we have small one or two instances where the bear gets into trouble. But the real trouble starts when the baby bear grows quite a lot. And the author had two Alsatian dogs also as pets in the house. And the, now that bear had grown to the height of the uh, Alsatian dogs and then outgrew it also. Now it becomes quite difficult to maintain such a huge animal and that also wildlife at home inside the home because now it had grown to quite a lot, uh, large size uh, to its full size and it had lots of physical strength and uh, the nails etc, uh, sharp teeth and it can harm the people. So. Uh, the author, especially lots of tenants and the children were living over there, so uh, maybe because of some reason it got uh, a little bit uh, aggressive and uh, it hurt one of the children or somebody else, then it, they might fall into grave danger. So the uh, author and his son, both of them tried to explain to the wife that now Bruno has grown quite a lot and it's difficult to keep it at home but Bruno uh, was a hot favorite of the wife and she didn't want she loved Bruno so much that she didn't want to part with it but after lots of uh, explaining to her consoling her she agreed that yes the size is too big we cannot keep it afford to keep it at home might happen something so at last they uh, write to the uh, uh, curator of the zoo, Mysore Zoo, and ask them if they want a tame bear for their collection. That means to keep at uh, their zoo. The curator instantly replies, yes, and he sends a lorry and uh, a cage also. And uh, Bruno is very hurriedly packed off to the zoo. Now, Bruno goes away to zoo. Here, the wife uh, is not eating anything since two or three days there. Bruno is also not eating because that separation, that bond of love was so strong that they are missing each other and are not ready to separate right so uh, here the wife was also fretting there the bear was also fretting and uh, whoever goes over there the wife asked uh, especially to go to the zoo and see if bruno was okay they said they came back and said yes he is okay but well but then he has gone uh, he has become a little bit weak thin and it's not uh, happy in the zoo it was quite happy over here at your place so this makes the wife even more uh, author's wife even more worried about um, him. Now for three months the author was able to hold back his wife uh, and avoid going to the zoo. But after three months now the uh, author's wife, uh, wife is really agitated and it wants to go and see Bruno because for three months she didn't allow herself to go to the um, zoo and see Bruno. But now uh, now she cannot wait any longer. So say, she said, if you are taking me to car, okay, then otherwise I'll go by myself by bus or train or anyhow I'll reach the zoo. So uh, the author took his wife to uh, Mysore by car and uh, everybody said that now Bruno is a wild animal and after three months of separation, he won't be able to rec recognize you. But uh, when the author's wife was just few yards away, Bruno, uh, that was now got renamed as Baba, this Baba, which is uh, which in, uh, uh, in our language means a small boy or a baby, right? So Baba or Bruno, whatever you call, it gave a cry from there when the wife was just a uh, few yards away and instantly recognized her even a few yards away and he was so happy and the wife also ran and clung to that baby, right? It was a baby for him because right from young childhood, the wife, author's wife had taken great care of it and treated 
just like a, um, just like an orphan child too and given lots of love to that baby and the uh, baby bear that is bruno or baba whatever you call when it got separated from the mother the author's wife acted as a mother so she and the baby bear cub saw the motherly figure in the author's wife and he was attached to the mother's uh, the uh, author's wife as a mother he treated uh, the uh, female as a mother and because she gave lots of love and care looked after him tended so in that way he was happy in fact to see its mother because in that author's wife he saw the figure of mother and both of them sat near the, uh, uh, the near the bars bruno inside the bars cage and uh, the author's wife outside the cage when for three whole hours they sat over there and the author's wife had brought so much of food over there to feed the baby that is baba and she kept on giving um, baba all different sides of delicacies and this and but then it was uh, the evening time and closing time and they had to separate now that separation again was unbearable and uh, uh, and the author's wife said to the curator can i have my baba back right he said no now he uh, the the animal it's government property because you handed it over to the zoo now it becomes a government property and it is beyond his authority to give back whatever it belongs to the government now he cannot give the government authority just to someone for that you need to go to the superintendent of the zoos who live in bangalore so now from my sewer they had to go to and uh, who lives in my sewer so that is where we had reached so let us go ahead to the chapter not only that he wrote the curator telling him to uh, lend us a cage for transporting the bear to bangalore now uh, so yeah, superintendent smangalore this is where we had reached that they went back to uh, bangalore from mysore to bangalore who where the superintendent lived and uh, very earnestly very honestly and looking at the tears in the eyes of the author's wife because the author's wife was pleading in front of the superintendent to give back back because she uh, that uh, that bear was a tame bear it never hurted any of the family members or it never hurted any of the other pets or it never hurted it uh, all the people over there were loving it and it would be quite safe and will look about the safety of not only the bear but also of all the residents over there and the superintendent was also moved by the feelings of the bond of love that he saw in between the animal and the family so he agreed he said okay now you go you will have to go back again to uh, mysore to pick up that uh, bear of yours i'll give you an authority letter to be handed over to the zoo so he was a kind hearted man and he consented that means he agreed so that is where we reached and let us go ahead with the today's chapter not only that he wrote the letter to the curator to provide a cage and uh, transporting the bear to bangalore because because you need a cage you cannot just transport it in the car yes it's a wild animal and suppose Uh, they open the car doors and it gets out and then it becomes trouble so it's better to transport till your house you, you from the zoo to your house you take the animal in a cage okay so back when we went to mysore okay, uh, armed with the superintendent's letter so okay he consen- consented he agreed and not only that he wrote an authority letter and he also requested the curator of the zoo to provide a cage for them so that they can go and uh, in that cage they can transport bruno to bangalore so again it was a journey back to mysore so the author and his wife both of them from bangalore they traveled all the back, uh, way back to mysore and to the zoo and gave that letter to the curator baba was driven in a small cage and hoisted on top of the car now uh, we know those cars on the back days right so it was a, sm- a small cage in which bruno was kept and the cage was put on the hoisted hoisted put on the top lifted and put on the top of the car the cage was tied securely whole of the cage now uh, we know the size of the car even if in those days might be um, a, 
uh, huge sturdy strong car but then there is a cage on top so whole of the journey has to be very very slow because uh, the cage should not get imbalanced otherwise whole of the uh, cage and the car they will uh, drop down to the side of the road so the cage was secured tightly and a slow and careful journey whenever they take up turn whenever they climb descend they have to be very very careful so it's a, it's a very slow journey from mysore to journey to bangalore was accomplished that means they reach back at their home in bangalore once home a squad of coolies were anchor, uh, engaged for special work in our compound now we know that the author lived in quite a big bungalow and had had a lots of spacious uh, um, ground in front of the bungalow and then there was that uh, uh, boundary wall right and that was that is how the bungalows in the olden days were a oh, big square uh, place uh, huge place uh, surrounded by boundary cement wall all around and then in the center that would be a bungalow so you we have a l- lots of space open space surrounding and there will be lots of trees etc so one corner was selected one high corner was selected where there was a very high wall and uh, lots of coolies were engaged because now you need to uh, lift that box up from the car and put it on the ground then some work has to be done in the compound right now an island was made for baba now we uh, see that the author now he cannot keep such a huge animal inside the home it will be quite dangerous and it would be quite awkward over there in the house so now baba has to be kept outside the house right but not it should not be able to escape from there so a protective some some type of protection must be made for baba so how was it made yes i'll just give you some uh, understanding of how the setup was made suppose this is the boundary wall right so this place was secured this this is quite a high wall where he cannot ex- escape this is quite a high wall he cannot escape from here it cannot escape from here now a ditch was made ditch khadda this a ditch was made over here so that it, the ditch is so deep and it is so wide that even when it wants uh, the animal cannot jump from one to the other side right so this is the island that we are talking about this this is the only space that he can move around freely and the cage is over here yes the cage uh, whenever it is night hey, there is uh, there's lots of hay spread over there on the bottom yes uh, maybe a tree or two are there and the cage is over here so the cage works as an accommodation or a residence for the uh, bear and lots of free space to room around but it cannot jump from this side to this side yes now what is the other arrangement made a plank of wood was kept over here so that the author's wife can go over there yes when she wants this plank can be lifted so that the ditch is again seen right and the bear cannot cross when the author's wife wants to go from the this this side of the ditch to that side uh, she will lower down the plank and she can walk and again pull up that plank whenever she again wants to come from this side to this side she can again lower down the plank walk on it and go to the other side to the house so this is how the arrangement was made for baba it was 20 feet long yes we already explained that right an island was made we just saw how the island was made and 20 feet long that island uh, island was made it was 20 feet long and 15 feet wide 20 feet long and 15 feet wide and was surrounded by a dry pit that ditch humne dekha hai that is the pit yes khadda bada sa lamba khadda right all around it so that it cannot jump from one side to the other was surrounded by a dry pit and or mot what that is what we call mot yes o katappa wale me kille ke samne jo darwaza hai sa karke yeah i took go from the outside to the inside of the fort you need that mot right that mot is that khadda 6 feet wide and 7 feet deep so that it cannot go inside the ditch and come out climb not climb out or 
it is seven feet wide so it, uh, six feet wide so it cannot even jump it has the limit it cannot jump that much right so that was made a wooden box that once housed fowls was brought and put in uh, on the island for baba to sleep in at night now there was a wooden box where fowls were what are fowls chicken wagara rakhte hain all that so uh, a huge wooden box that uh, was uh, made to keep the fowls uh, yes uh, that was shifted from somewhere kabad khane mein pada hoga wahan se utha ke it so does a room or a cage for the uh, for the bear now at night baba can go inside that box and sleep yes not inside uh, uh, it was facing this way so it can creep in and go to sleep and lots of hay and soft material was kept so it becomes quite cozy and comfortable for the bear straw was placed inside to keep him warm and his baby the nal stump along with his gun and lots of other things his favorite toys for example we know earlier in the um, story uh when he was growing up they uh, taught lots of commands to the bear so whenever he was saying baba uh, was baby so he'll take a wooden stump and cradle that wooden stump as if so these were his favorite toys and those toys were kept over there which were the toys his baby that is the block of wood uh, nal stump along with the gun a stick his with which he is to play gun gun with the children the piece of mambo both of which had been very sentimentally kept by the author's wife right preserved is yes, sentiment lots of emotions are attached with that is yes, these block of for us it is just a block of wood but that block of wood served as a toy for the bear so the author's wife had preserved it very carefully because lots of sentiments are attached now baba is back so that block of wood and that stick again came out and baba was presented with those toys since he had been away sent with they were put again back for him to play with no these are the um, toys that the bear is used to play with so these things were put in that box and in few days the coolie hoisted the cage onto the island and baba was really when that mot was made everything was uh, cleared up yes and now that coolies they hoisted the cage and uh, the box there and when the cage was dropped over there it was uh, the door was open and then the cage was pulled back and the box was already there so now baba who was in cage all this time was now released on that island and we can understand when a caged animal is released it feels a lots of relief and it's quite excited happy now it can roam around in that small spot right and it can live on its own he was delighted he was happy standing on his hindlings he pointed his gun and cradled his baby he was so happy to be once again in a free environment not in a cage he is restricted by that ditch and not but both of them are original right he knows he cannot jump in and go out he knows he cannot jump on the other side but this much space 15 feet 20 feet whatever he has that much area is completely free and it belongs to him now my wife spent hours sitting on a chair there while he sat on her lap so what happened is now my wife used to visit baba many times in a day and she used to go uh, we understood that by lowering the plank she used to walk on it and go cross the mat and be with baba there she used to sit and my wife used to spend hours sitting on the chair while uh, baba used to, used to sit on the ground and put his head on the lap and she, that is the meaning yes he was 15 months old and pretty heavy too now that baba is now 15 months old that means it's a nearly full grown size yes and it's quite heavy so uh, in earlier time when it was a baby uh, the author's wife could keep in on lap right but now it has grown too heavy right so it cannot hold up that sit on the uh, author's wife's lap so uh, she sits on a chair and the bear puts his head on her lap and both of them spent as she is caressing her right loving her all the time and both of them are quite happy the way my wife reaches the island and leaves and that is also interesting we sh- we saw that now only difference is how it was done wo plank ke sath ek rassi bandh ke upar ped ke upar right and the uh, other side of the rope was hanging so 
you need to pull it up and tie it somewhere so the plank is up and you cannot go that bear cannot cross now when you want to grow uh, you you when you want to go to the other side of the arm that is you want to visit baba then what you do is release that rope so the plank will slowly come down yes you can walk and again the plank will be pulled away right when you want to cross again you pull the plank down walk around again pull the plank up so that uh, now i have tied a rope to the overhanging branch of the mango tree with a loop at its end putting on one foot in the loop she kicks off with the other and the plank falls down to bridge the uh, six foot gap that constitutes the width of the surrounding pit the retention is also made the same way right we return the knee when you come back when the uh, author's wife comes back she again give a tuck to the rope and again that plank is up and uh, but who can say now now huh? both are happy right uh, the slot whenever it is alone it cannot cross when the author's wife wants to go and be with the bear uh, it can easily go over there across the mat with the um, plank yes and then when she uh, wants to go back to the house she again walks over the plank comes to the other side and pulls off that plank now the ditch is there which the slot cannot just jump over or so both of them are quite happy now who can say that is the last question that is given over here who can say now that a sloth bear no, has no sense of affection affection love so now who can say a sloth bear does not have affection just look at the way he was raised in our family got so much attached and fond of the mother right that the lady of the house the author's wife got so much attached there was so much love between them that even when it is a wild animal but just see the wife now sitting on the chair on the tiled and, and baba such a big bear uh, just puts his head on the uh, on the lap of the author's wife and both of them are well, god knows what telling poems stories talking to that bear i don't know whether the bear understands any language anything that the, is spoken by the author's wife but it certainly understands affection love that love which is shown by a woman a human being to the sloth bear right it's a wild animal no memory it doesn't have memory it was proved the separation was 3 months where the uh, the animal wild animal the uh, sloth bear was away in the zoo but he recognized the motherly love and the mother who gave it and in such a way that the separation cannot be seen by any human being even the hardened curator Uh, was also feeling soft yes when he saw that love between the human being and the sloth bear and he and the superintendent also who had not seen those things but uh, tears in the eyes of um, the author's wife told him that there was lots of love between this human being and that animal and it is not to be separated that animal is totally harmless for the human being sitting in front of that is the author's wife and he gave consent he agreed to give that wild animal back to the family no memory and no individual characteristics it has individual characteristic that uh, bear mind you if it sees any danger on the author's wife that is uh, whom he considered as mother if he sees any danger he is going to attack on any other human being who is trying to attack the author's wife this yes. so that much sentiment has been developed that much love and affection was there between a human being and a wild animal so we complete the chapter over here now let's start with the understanding of one of the poem from the main book that is we have uh, poem number 9 name of the poet poem is the snake trying it's written by a very very famous and popular poet w w e ross name of the poet is w w e ross he is a very well known and quite a famous poet and he has written this poem on human tendency name of the poem is the snake trying now 
Before going to the poem, let us take a quick summary of the poem because summary forms a very important question of the poem itself. Yes, we are asked questions from poems right from the syllabus. So, uh, summary itself becomes one of the important question regarding that related with that poem. For example, write the summary of the poem, The Snake Trying. So, let us take the summary, try to understand it. Right now, we just hear the, this is about human tendency, right? And uh, as soon as we hear the word snake, bells start ringing in the mind, right? And we try to figure out where that sneaking, sneaked, small, tiny, long, tube-like structure is. We try to find it. If we see something moving, long, tube-like structure, right, it's a snake. First thing is not to get our eyes off the snake because it's a very small little thing. Yes, even if it is big, then also it is a tube-like structure and disappears in any of the cracks found, right? So it disappears within no time if you don't have a good look at where it's going. And the first thing that it that strikes us is to find a stick so that we can defend ourselves because it is not only in India but all over the world, people when they see the snake, they have the alarm bangs ringing in their brain, mind and the first thing they need is a long, long stick to keep them away from the snake and also that stick helps in beating that snake and killing it. That is human tendency. Yes, it is very frightful of that uh, snake, that slithering small object like the snake, black, green, uh, green ones are even smaller, right? Water snakes, yes, you can't find them in that whirling, whirling water. And we are very much afraid of it. But uh, science tells us that most of these snakes are not harmful. Yes, but now, do we know which snake is harmful? The, the general public doesn't have that much uh, that much general knowledge as to identify which type of snake it is, whether it is harmful or not. There is only one way of knowing it is harmful or not when it bites us. If we don't die, then uh, it's not harmful. If we die, then it is harmful, right? So we don't know the difference between a harmful one and a harmless one, right? So basically that thing scares the people, right? Because it is known fact that uh, snakes poison. If it is poisonous, then the snake's poison spreads throughout the body. It changes the color of the body and the person dies within a very short time. So people get scared looking at the snake. When they just find a glimpse of snake or in, in the dark, in the semi-dark, if they find something a small black tube-like structure, they are Im immediately alarmed. It might be a snake. And if it is moving, that is confirmed. So the first thing is to find the stick and to protect yourself. Arm yourself with that stick so that you can keep on beating on the ground and the snake doesn't come near you. And if you are lucky, one or two hits over there and it will immobilize the snake and possibility that you can hit more and kill it. That is human tendency on which the poem is focused. Right? A snake is seen and so people rush behind it. It's a harmless green snake. Yes, it doesn't have any poison. But then the snake tries to save itself. That is the name of the poem. The snake trying. What is the snake trying? The snake is trying to get itself away from the people, away from the beating on the ground sticks by the people and to find a small little hole or some small, small little crack in the rocks or to disappear in the wilderness, in the bushes, in the green. It tries to find and that's the name of the poem, the snake trying. So in this poem, a harmless green colored snake tries to save itself from being hit by a person who is chasing it with a stick to kill it. The poet says that the snake is completely harmless even to children. Yes, because it is a non-poisonous snake. It doesn't have poison in its fangs, right? So it is not poisonous at all, but now we can't wait to check it, right? So the man, whoever has seen that snake is running 
behind the snake with a stick and constantly tapping and beating it on the ground somewhere near the snake. We know how the snake uh, was curls and and it make makes a wave like structure on the um, wave like impression on the sand and it moves in that curly manner and it's very difficult to beat it because the whole of the body keeps on uh, curling here and there and we are not sure where we have to strike. People fear snakes and when they see one they try to kill it with a stick that we discussed. The snake tries to save itself here and hides behind the green colored bushes of marshy plants growing in the water. Marshy plants where there is uh, the water is just above the surface of the soil or the earth surface of the land and uh, it's quite marshy so it's quite muddy thing and small small plants do come up from there and whole of the area is will camouflage with those green uh, plants that are coming out of the water and the snake is trying to go in and it, so that it can uh, very very easily it can camouflage itself it can hide in that green luscious thing and small bush like and, and it can save itself. So that is where it is heading but the man behind the snake is hitting it everywhere and makes it difficult for the snake to move. It hides in the ripples of the water the, because of the movement maybe of the snake, maybe of the snake or just the water is flowing so ripples are caused and the snake very well hides because ripples, the shape of the ripples and the shape the snake makes in, on the land, in the water, it is just similar. So it very easily hides in the ripples of the water in order to save itself and the snake is successful in its attempt. The snake disappears behind the marshy plants. Now let us look at the uh, poem itself. The snake trying, the same, uh, that is the uh, name of the poem also and the very first line is, now this is complete one stanza. So it is a continuous poem without any stanzas, right? The snake trying to escape the pursuing stick. Pursuing the stick which is uh, which which uh, it's following to beat it, right? So it is beating on the ground right now. Is it? It is. It has yet not been able to touch the snake because of the slithering move that it makes. This curvy moves that it makes. So. The man hits it on the ground, but at that time, because he sees that shape over there, there is that eye and hand combination. Yes, the snake's um, figure is there. He sees that figure with his eyes and judges his stick will beat over there. But by the time the hit stick hits on that shape, the shape has formed a new shape. And that is why the snake is not there and the stick hits the ground. So the person is trying to hit the snake and that, that is that pursuing stick. Pursuing following. With sudden curvings of thin long body. We know the long thin body makes sudden curves and that is why the man is not successful in beating the snake exactly where he wants to hit it. How beautiful and graceful are his shapes. Very beautiful. Yeah, on the sand that especially when the snake is moving those curves that you find on the uh, sand. Yes the impressions of that body because the uh, snake walk, uh, walks on its belly. Right? So, the beautiful curves are there. That, that's a very beautiful scene to see. Instantly where the snake has moved, you'll find curves over the body made him impression on the sand. So, that is what the uh, poem, a poet is very much excited about. He finds those curves on the, that shape on the impression on the sand very, very beautiful. Yes, how beautiful and graceful are his shapes. Graceful that the, uh, the way it moves, it has certain grace, it has certain beauty in it. He glides through the water away from the stroke, right? He glides through the water away from the stroke. The, uh, the stick has just hit the ground, but then it is able to save itself in the water and it has just avoided a stroke of the stick. Oh, let him go over the water. Now the poet. The poet, it looks as if he is watching that scene from the distance, a man with a stick in his hand trying to beat the snake and the snake trying to escape. So he feels inwardly that inside he feels, oh, let that snake go. It is just trying to escape. It is not that 
harmless it is not that harmful it's not a poisonous snake it is a very small beautiful snake it is most have ventured out in the open right it shouldn't do that but then maybe to go from one side to other so it needs to go in that open it needs to be exposed and that's why it's over there it just wants to glide away in the water and slide in the water and hide inside the bushes over there of the green but let him do so it is a very harmless snake it doesn't have poison it is a completely non poisonous snake but the man behind it doesn't know so the author is wishing oh just let let him go over the water into the reeds to hide we have done this word reed it's that hollow tubing plant plant which is a hollow tubing which usually the flute etc is made up of yes you cut the reed reed it's a hollow tubing make it straight allow it to dry pour, pour some holes in it and you have a beautiful flute made out of reed so that is that reed which is growing in quite a lot thick bush like stuck uh, uh, thing in the uh, uh, in that uh, fresh water right so it wants to go and hide and camouflage itself over there very beautifully it hides in that so it is quite a harmless and very 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 harmless small little snake it means no harm to you it doesn't want to bite you it doesn't have any poison it's not going to kill you so just let it go it wants to go and hide and save itself without hurt small and green he is harmless even to the children maybe the poet knows that snake and says it's a very small one and maybe uh, it's quite even harmless to the children it cannot harm the children at the bite even if it bites it doesn't have any poison so it's not going to harm the children also why are you behind it along the sand he lay still un- until observed and chased away when it sees because uh, the Uh, snake it doesn't have ears so it's whole of the belly whole of the snake is on the ground lying so when some feet are approaching some animal is approaching some human being is approaching the vibrations caused by the uh, by the sand reaches it and it knows somebody is coming so it will lie still yes so that it doesn't catch the eyes of the person approaching and so it likes to stay still until you find it and start hitting it and then it has to move and save itself and now he vanishes in the ripples along the green sleeve reeds and it is very successful yes the man is behind it with a stick trying to hit it often but every time it tries to hit the ship the ship moves over there and that is how the snake saves itself and it is able to go into that water in that small uh, weedy structure over it yes the reed that has overgrown over there and very soon it hides in that reed in the water or near the uh, land and the water where it meets yes a little bit opening is there it gets into it and in that reed it's very difficult to find the snake so at last the snake is able to save itself so it's a very quiet um, small a very simple and a very easy form and we'll be doing the figures of speech in the next lecture thank you students